Hi, this is Rick Fairbanks, Pro Clean Exteriors. And I see these questions all the time, how to set up my trailer and stuff like this. So this is mainly for the newer guys, uh, maybe gives you some ideas and stuff like that. I want to just give you a quick, well, not so quick, I'm actually going into some detail on some things I've learned and, uh, over the years and uh, things I think that might help you some. So here's a brief overview of my trailer right now. I've got a 100-gallon mix tank at the front, my IBC tote behind it. It's a 275. And walking around, you see I've got the stack reels here, the Titan reels. This is my uh, roof systems in this box here, this Northern Diamond Plate Toolbox. I'll talk about it in a little bit. Then I've got my high-pressure hose here at the back. Uh, I've always got a drum of bleach on the trailer. At some some amount of full might be full might be half full but I always have some over here you can see I've got two uh, high pressure machines one of the bombs a four gallon 4,000 psi machine pressure pro machine and on the tops so an eight and a half gallon 3,500 machine <clears throat> you see underneath there I've got uh, a 13 gallon aluminum fuel tank they'll actually feed two at a time but it's kind of a pain hooking up the four gallon direct in fact more trouble it's worth but you see I actually staggered when I built the platform because you see I run out of, ran out of space pretty quick I'll give you a little bit of history uh, I had to stagger it so I could reach the fuel tank on the uh, four gallon machine and in all honesty I wish I'd been had it out about another three or four inches further from the platform I put the eight and a half gallon on Walking on around the back of the trailer here, I've got a half ladder rack. I can put two ladders on here comfortably. Um, on this side, you see I built some brackets, or had built. Uh, one thing, I'll give you a word of advice. Get to be good friends with a fabricator if you aren't one, and because uh, you're always going to be needing something built. So anyway, here's my ladder rack here. I actually put these little brackets here in purpose so I can slide all my poles in there and uh, it makes it handy. Uh, I got another big piece of PVC pipe there for my uh, small brooms and brushes and stuff like that. This bracket works really well though for the whisper wash and you can actually do the brackets wider to get a bigger one on there if you wanted to. That's a 20 inch. Then up here you see lots of buckets uh, storage and you'll see on this side too you always got gallons of stuff you know you got your f9 you got your gutter grenade or whatever you got three or four different soaps and most of these five gallon buckets have stuff inside of them too uh, yeah so they've got yeah spray bottles of stuff different chemicals and stuff like that so it's always uh you always need more room uh, these two plastic gun racks, which I'm sure a lot of you have seen because I posted the pictures. You know, Walmart, uh, nine bucks a piece. There are two of them. I spaced two of them out further apart for the longer stuff. And then uh, two of them closer for my shorter guns. These are my uh, filters going into my high pressure machines. <clears throat> it's two inch pipe coming off. It drops down to a one and a half and then goes to a uh, my two filters and there's a one inch coming out of each one of them. Uh, these are the blue top water filters. I actually like these. I like being able to see when they get dirty. Uh, I can see the water flowing good stuff. Those are one inch hoses. Uh, that's the good stuff that uh, you know they won't kink or anything like that. Uh, going to the pressure washers, even my four gallon a minute machine, I went ahead and ran the one inch to it too. But these are great filters. You can see when it's flowing and stuff, you see it's flowing good. When they get dirty, you easy to see and that you just unscrew it, clean it out. They work great. Now to give you a little bit of detail here, I love the totes. Uh, I've had other tanks. This is like said my third bill on this trailer. Now this trailer's a six and a half by ten. I don't know if you see the whole thing. Um, how I started out here, I started primarily roof cleaning. So I had a 100-gallon tank, a 50-gallon 
water tank, um, and then I had my roof system in a, one of the big, I don't know, it was a huge Home Depot roll-away plastic thing. I had to roll it up, and I had it sitting down on the floor. I could just flip it up. Uh, worked great. It was nice. I could just do my quick disconnects, roll it off, put it in the garage in the winter time and stuff like that. But it didn't take me long. You know, if somebody's got a dirty roof, well, they probably had dirty sidewalks and the house was dirty, something else was dirty. So I started off with a four gallon, 4,000 PSI machine. And of course, once I got that, then I had to have a pressure washer hose. Before, I just had my hose, uh, my rinse hose, mounted on one of those uh, four wheel or two wheel dolly carts, reels. And it worked good, it worked fine. I had a booster pump for it. I always had my uh, roof hose. That's the 300 feet of the CureTech. Uh, that's probably close to three years old now. Great shape, but I do take care of it. The uh, So anyway, once I got the pressure washer, it didn't take me long to figure out that 50-gallon tank wasn't going to be big enough as a buffer tank. Around here, some houses have seven gallons a minute flow, and some got two gallons a minute flows. Amazing. So I went and got the tote. Of course, once I got the tote, then I had to reorganize. I couldn't uh, put that uh, big Home Depot rollaway cart wouldn't fit on the floor anymore. And of course, after about my probably my third or fourth uh, driveway job with the four gallon minute machine, <laughs> I said I had to get up. So I went to the eight and a half gallon machine, and there wasn't any place to put it. So I built platforms. So that's one tip. Don't be afraid to go up on your trailer. Notice everything, because floor space is critical. Uh, go up. And as you can see, this thing's grown. It's actually, I've actually got a new 14-foot dual axle on order. Hopefully be here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but like I said, this is my third build on this trailer. I've had to reorganize, completely rebuild it. And I'm sure anybody that's been in the business for any amount of time has been through this before, probably a lot more times than I have. So just to give you a few tips, though, is to try to organize your space. But I can say a lot of you, I know I see people starting off with a 5 by 8 or 4 by 6 Yes, you can do it with that. But the more services you add and more equipment you add, you just, you unbelievable how quick you'll outgrow it. So I would almost encourage you to try to stretch it what you can to get as big a trailer as you can you know, stand the heat on right now because trust me you'll fill it up quicker than you can imagine especially you know, if your business is doing well so anyway what I ended up doing pulling the 50 gallon tank off got the tote reorganized and put this in here this works out really well even if this 275 at some homes if, I, if it's a big driveway and I'm running the pressure the eight and a half gallon minute machine a lot I'll suck that thing down and uh, so my next one, I'm going to go to the th 335 or 325, the next size up on it. But like I said, I like the totes. You can hang stuff on them. You can put signs on them. Uh, they compact floor space. I mean, there's a reason they're designed like they're designed. And they're rugged. Uh, I think I saw somebody do remember to loosen your lid on it or there's actually a little breather hole in it because <laughs> if you suck the water down you're hard on it and you don't you'll suck it in you'll shrink it in and you'll come out to the trailer and it'll be shrunk in like a pretzel and the only way to get it back up is to fill the thing 100 percent back up the top to pop it back out so a few little things here how to mount your reels what i did now, i wasn't sure this was going to work when i first did my uh host notice here i've got the trailer i got it overlapping just a little bit here purely for space I'm always squeezing every inch I can but I actually put three bolts along this side and then there's a two in the, there's two in the front and this thing is rugged I mean it's not going anywhere uh, there's a stack bracket here I think they're about 80 bucks for these brackets here so if you want to stack the reels like I said I got my roof here and this main coming water so really no high pressure and this thing's solid I mean it's not going anywhere uh, that's the trailer shaking <laughs> you're in coming to water supply Guys, I see a lot of guys running these little brass uh, valves here. Look inside those sometimes. This is actually comes from Ace Hardware. It's their PVC one. But you can actually see how thick this is right in here. You can stick your whole thumb in there so it doesn't impede your water flow. Um, and they're same price as the brass ones. And you look inside one of those brass ones, it's 
about the size of a pencil going through there. So it doesn't do you good to have if you've got a three-quarter or five-eighths inch hose and you're pushing water through there to your tank. The other thing is, you see here I've got this hose. This is probably the most important <laughs> hose in my trailer. I'm using this thing all the time. Filling buckets, rinsing things off. Uh, you're always going to need one of those. So get one of these brackets, like I said, it's about six ninety five or something like that. Now, incoming water filter. You see this filter here, and it's actually dirty. I started taking, and I just cleaned this about a month ago. Uh, one tip: anytime you got to hook your water up, hose up to your water for your incoming tank, let it run for about thirty seconds. And I do, and it's only been a month since I've changed this, and it's full of debris. In fact, as soon as I get through shooting this video, I'm gonna flush it out. Um, it's amazing how dirty some of the water coming out of some of these people's water lines are. So put you some kind of filter on this. This one just happens to be a cheap one. Uh, from Home Depot. I've had it crack and stuff. They're not the best made. They're about 10 or 12, 15 bucks. But about every three months, I carry it back and get a new one because it cracks somewhere. Uh, this is a dryer or washing machine hose, heavy duty. It's been on there for, gosh, about a year now. It looks brand new. So that works good. That's a three quarter inch. Now, this is five eighths inch Flexilla hose. Guys, unequivocally, I will never, ever own any other hose as long as they make Flexilla. Uh, it's 5 eighths. They just started making a three-quarter. And probably what I'm going to do is sometime this spring, I'll change this out and use this at my house because I love it so much and throw away all the other crap I've got. And uh, But <laughs> absolute best hose. The only thing I don't like about them, they actually have these aluminum heads on them. And you see you drag it across the driveway. They get scratched up. They make an end now that they're not making on the 100, which they probably will. It's got a cover on that part of it. But the hose itself, you can't be beat. So get you, as Northern sells these little short pieces of hose, or you make one up. I think it's like 12 feet. So like I said, you want to get that. Uh, the uh, See here on this pressure washer, I actually just had my fabricator build a little bracket for it um, like I said get to be friends with a fabricator you're gonna need them if you're not one yourself so anyway, just a few little tips I'll carry some of these cords here you notice I strap this off um, I'll bleach off if you look down here close I'll try and get you a close-up see that bracket down there at the bottom holding my toe on I see people strapping them down and stuff see if I can get a better shot at one yeah a little bit better here um, just get some U-bolts. I've got two on each side, about all the way around it. That thing holds it. I mean, it's solid as rock. It's not going anywhere. You know, I got two in the front, two in the rear, and two on each side. U-bolts bolted through the uh, floor of your trailer. Yeah, you know, hold it there like a solid as rock. That way, you're not riding around with straps over it looking. Oh, um, because those straps, like you know, they're gonna dry rot sooner or later in the weather. I want to talk a little bit about my uh, soft wash system here. Now this box, like I said, once I had to get rid of my big Home Depot floor unit, I love my layout so much that I went and got this. And these actually, they have them on sale once in a while. They're usually like three sixty nine. these Northern Toolboxes. They're made for uh, under a truck. Uh, but uh, it worked out perfectly. That's the reason it's got the front entry door. But you, sometimes they run them on sale. I just saw I got an email today that they were three twenty nine, and you can always find a coupon for like twenty bucks. So about three hundred bucks for the container. I put an external outlet on it, weatherproof box on my switch here. And notice I keep this little carabiner clip here. That just lets me see real clear. That is, I know it's off before I get on the road or somewhere like that. It reminds me at night I lay it up here on top. That way, when I'm walking around doing my final checkup, you know, I just clip it in there just to make sure I hadn't left the pump on. Uh, I'll look inside here. Now, I've got two Delavan Fat Boy pumps. One on the right, one on the left is my backup. Accumulators in the back. They're all secured to the walls with stainless steel screws. Uh, another tip, use stainless anywhere you need to bolt anything down, guys. Just nothing else will hold up. Uh, my battery box inside it, I've got one of those uh, AGM batteries. I used to have the big one that you could barely lift. 
darn thing must have weighed 50 pounds. Uh, deep marine cycle. This is a, a made for a trolling motor, but as you can see, it's real small, little battery. And this thing will run. I can run it all day long and come home and put it on the charger, and it's still like 75, 80 percent. So this little Duracell uh, AGM battery. I remember at Sam's, I think I got it for like, yeah, you know, it was like a hundred bucks or something. And heck, it's been in here for a year on this setup. So, I want to show you my setup, though, real quick here. So, I pull up the job. Now, this is my income here. And, uh, see everybody asking, well, what's a drop stick, stuff like that. Here's a drop stick. Plain old filter on the end of it. This is a 5 8 inch hose, internal ID hose. Just get, I think this is a one and a quarter inch piece of PVC pipe. Just slide it on down there. Drops right into my uh, mix tank. I can take it over here, pump bleach with it, drop it in there. I use it for everything. If I want to drop it down and like when I pre-treat on a driveway, I'll take it over there and drop it in my uh, 15 gallon mix tank. I drop it in a five gallon tank. I use it for all kind of stuff, and that's the reason I don't like some of these, you know, everybody's got, I've seen guys that had more tied up in banjo valves and three-way valves, and my whole system is, uh, you don't need it. This works great. I've been using it for like three years now. Absolutely nothing I'll change about it in my new build. I absolutely love it. I mean, yesterday doing a driveway, I pre-treated it with my soft wash system with my 12-volt pump, pre-treated it. Then uh, I did my post treat. Uh, I had some places on some mold or something. I needed a lot stronger mix. So I hit it with my uh, roof mix. Did my post treat, it. and it's just matter. You pull it up, shake the end of it a little bit, drop it over in the other bucket. It takes about uh, the hose, 300 feet of hose. I hold about three gallons of fluid, and I know about how long it runs. So you're really not wasting. You can put the nozzle back in your tank until it gets out. So let me show you how this is set up. And what makes this so effective is, if you notice, most everybody's got a 12-volt pump and they're using a proportion or a bunch of valves, they have to go to the booster pump. And I've got to be pretty good friends with one of the engineers at Delavan when I was first starting, and uh, he helped me out a lot. Notice my uh, pumps are right side up. See a lot of people post because of wiring. That's just not a problem anymore. They don't have that problem. The early ones they used to, they, they don't anymore. So, uh, right there, what I do is this hooks right into here, quick into there, and that's my income. I can suck, I said I can suck from anywhere I want to. This is my out, I mean, excuse me, this one here is coming out of my accumulator. And this is my outgoing. I can take it and plug it over here if I want to transfer bleach. I just plug it right into here. When I'm ready to uh, shoot something with it, all quick disconnects. Now this pump here is probably, uh, God, it's probably got 100 roofs on it. Probably a good year and a half old. I've got a backup over here that uh, I bought used and somebody had been used like twice. I've never had to use it, but see this, I've actually got it switched, all quick disconnects. If mine does go out, I've got the heat fins on this one, transfer them over there, but literally within a minute, I can uh, switch pumps. So, real simple system, works great, but the big advantage I want everybody to notice here, there's some nice curves but there are no 90 degree angles. A lot of these things, systems you see, they have, you know, 90 degree elbows. They've got all kinds of stuff. And what it does, it affects your flow. According to Delvin, every time you put an elbow in there, it affects it about 5%. So, uh, since these systems aren't super powerful anyway, and somebody told me this early on, don't have any elbows, and I don't. Uh, all mine's. You know, like I said, the steepest thing I've got is this curb right here. That way you're getting the full flow. You don't have a bunch of valves. You don't have a bunch of elbows and stuff like that. 
The result is I can shoot all day long right at around 40 feet. Sometimes a good day a little bit more with a regular 12 volt pump. Oh, it's quiet. <laughs> it's bulletproof. I've never had, I mean, mine's never been down a minute. I do take care of it though. I mean, if I, you know, I flush it out with about at least five gallons of water, uh, sometimes 10. Every once in a while I'll run some uh, bleach neutralizer through there. I'll use final rinse or everybody makes them, but I'll run that through there. And then after I run that through there, I'll flush it with water. So it takes me, you know, a few minutes when I get done to do it. But like I said, it's a real simple system. Works like a champ. And I like it. I mean, I've run everything through this pump. I've shot oxalate through it. And I like the flexibility. I don't want to be tied down to certain tank. I like the idea of being able to just pull it out of one container, drop, drop it in a bucket of water if I need to flush it first, and then just throw it in the other tank, whatever I want to pull. I said it works like a champ because I don't have any bends. It works good. It throws, you know, incredible distance for a 12 volt pump. I mean, I see some of these guys with the booster pumps and they don't shoot any further than I do. So, I mean, nothing against it. If that's what you want, that's fine. But you don't have to, you don't need all that. So let's talk about cost on this system. Uh, the box, is, like I said, that's the most expensive thing. It's like 300 bucks. I got two pumps. And I think you can find those if you shop hard, probably around 200 bucks each. So that's 700 bucks. Accumulator is about 65 bucks. So you're 765. Oh. Uh, and you got your drop hose there. You know, you got some hardware, stainless hardware, uh, some gator lock fittings. So you probably got another 100 to 150 bucks in the thing. So where are we? 700, 765, 865. Your battery box are like 15 bucks. And say a battery for 100 to 125 bucks. And you've got your darn nice system that you can use for a lot of different things. You can soft wash houses with it. You can definitely do roofs with it. And, uh, you know, you don't have a lot of money tied up in it. And it looks nice. I mean, everything's nice and contained. Nothing's exposed to the elements. You know, I get through with it. I just stick everything back in there. Roll my hose up. Shut my door. And, uh... You know, it's ready to go. So, just uh, keep that in mind when you look at these things. Obviously, you're still going to need a mixed tank uh, and your hose. Well, uh, the hose is about, I guess, 300 bucks. If you're going to get a reel, that's another 300 bucks. Uh, but your system itself, you know, you're probably less than a thousand bucks than whatever you do with your hoses and tanks. So, anyway, just an idea. Hopefully give you some ideas. Hope this helps some of you. Um, and that's it. I wanna, one other thing I want to add, guys. Take care of your equipment. You know, you can go to Sam's or probably find it at Walmart, too. These nice little chamois-type towels. Buy, like, a 36-pack for, like, 10 bucks or 11 bucks, something like that or any kind of good shop rags. You know, when I'm reeling in my hoses, I mean, I wipe the hoses down as I'm reeling them in. I make sure I've flushed them all with, they all have water, have been run through them. Uh, just take care of your equipment. You know, wipe your equipment down once in a while. You know, it's like taking care of a car. Uh, for one thing, it's gonna give a lot better impression when you pull up with somebody's home if your stuff doesn't look like it's been through a war zone. But was, also, none of this stuff is cheap. Oh, you know, I made the decision when I started to try to buy, you know, maybe not the very most expensive, but good equipment as I went along. And I took my time doing it so I could afford to buy the stuff I wanted. Uh, but take care of it. I know we're all tired. We get in sometimes. But I never leave a job site. The last thing I do is unhook my water hose from the house machine because I rinse down everything, including my hoses, get my trailer quit squirt down. Then I'll go and hook the hose from the house and reel it in. Um, so, you know, just rinse your trailer down. I've never had any trouble. One thing I did want to show you, too, on the floor of mine, I put this deck over stuff. Uh, Home Depot's guy, I think Bear makes it or something. 
Uh, this is like two years old. And yeah, I've spilled all kind of crap on there. It's got the, I got the, it's the textured one. It's got kind of a rough, non-skid surface on it. It's held up like a champ. In fact, that's probably what I'm going to put down with my new one. Uh, it's held up really, really well. And even back here where I'm scraping barrels and everything else. Uh, like I said, this has been on here for at least two years. And it's held up like a champ, so I'd highly recommend that. But uh, just take care of your equipment, guys. Like I said, it's expensive. If you take care of it, it's going to take care of you. I'm a firm believer in that. So, anyway, hope this helps. Bye.